Good evening, everyone. Um, hello from the Reading Pixie and Teddington Bear, who has come to sit on my knee while I read you a story this evening. Uh, we're on one of my all-time favourite books, Friends and Brothers by Dick King Smith. Um, it's several short stories about Charlie and William. Um, so I will read you the first one tonight and I'll read you another one tomorrow. So, chapter one, Friends and Brothers. You say that word just once more, said William to Charlie, and I'll hit you. Charlie said it. William hit him. Charlie then let out a screech and kicked William on the shin and William bellowed. William and Charlie's mother came rushing in like a whirlwind with a face like thunder. You two will drive me mad, she stormed. All you do is fight all day long. William hit me, said Charlie. Why did you hit him, William? Because Charlie keeps on saying the same word. Whatever I say, he says the same word over and over again. Anyway, he kicked me. Will hit me first, said Charlie. William, said his mother, you are not to hit Charlie. He is younger than you and much smaller. The next time you do, I shall hit you. You didn't ought to, Mum, said William. Why not? I'm younger than you and much smaller. Absolutely, said Charlie. There you are, shouted William madly. That's the word. Whatever I say, he just says, absolutely. He doesn't even know what it means. Absolutely, said Charlie. William let out a yell of rage and rushed at his brother with fists clenched. Charlie dodged behind his mother, who held the furious William at arm's length. Now stop it, the pair of you, she said. William, you stop attacking Charlie, and Charlie, you stop annoying Will. I cannot stand one more minute of being shut in this house with you two. Get your bikes, we're going to the park. William stumped off, limping slightly from the kick and shouting angrily, It's not fair! From behind his mother's back, Charlie's face appeared. Silently, he mouthed the word. In the park, William rode his BMX at top speed. He felt the need to be all by himself, miles from anybody. The roads in the park were full of steep switchback slopes and William swooped down them flat out. Like a lot of elder brothers, he felt he'd had the raw deal. Charlie, meanwhile, was trying to see how slowly he could pedal without falling off. He had not long inherited William's old bike and was fascinated by the problems of balance. This was much more fun than a tricycle. Like a lot of younger brothers, he had forgotten all about the recent round and he was singing happily to himself. Then he came to one of the steepest slopes. He grinned and bent low over the handlebars. His mother, walking some way behind, saw the small figure disappear from view. A moment later, a dreadful wailing started her running hard. Halfway down the slope, Charlie lay sprawled in the road, the old bikes beside him, one wheel still spinning. His face, she saw when she reached him, was covered in blood. There was a deep cut across his forehead and a set of long scratches gravel-studded down one cheek. At that moment, William came flying back down the reverse slope and skidded to a halt, wide-eyed with horror at the scene. What happened? he said miserably. I don't know. He must have touched the brakes and gone straight over the handlebars. Look, listen carefully, Will. We must get him to hospital quickly. That cut's going to need stitches. I'm going to carry him to the nearest park gate, that one over there, and try and stop a car to give us a lift. Can you wheel both bikes and stick them out of sight in those bushes and then run and catch me up? Yes, Mum, said William. He looked at his brother's face. Charlie was still crying, but quietly now. He'll be all right, won't he? William said. 24 hours later, Charlie, recovered now from the shock of his accident, was jabbering away 19 to the dozen. He remembered little of the actual crash or of his treatment in hospital, the stitching of the cut and the cleaning up of his gravelly face. It was very swollen now, so that one side of him didn't look like Charlie at all, but his voice was as loud and piercing as ever, and he plied his brother with endless questions. Did you see me come off, Will? No. I went over right over the handlebars, didn't I? I suppose so. How fast do you think I was going, Will? I don't know. A hundred miles an hour, do you think? squeaked Charlie excitedly. I expect so, Charles, said William in a kindly voice. You looked an awful mess when I got there. Lots of blood, Will? Yes, oh, it was horrible. Then what happened? Well, Mum ran all the way to the nearest gate carrying you and a kind lady in a car stopped and gave us a lift to the hospital. And then they stitched me up, said Charlie proudly. Yes. Did you see them sticking me up? 
for stitching me up, Will? No, Charles. I expect it was a huge great needle, said Charlie happily. You've never had six stitches, have you, Will? No, said William. You were jolly brave, Charlie, he said. You can never go on my BMX when you're better. I can't reach the pedals, Charlie said. Oh, well. Well, you could take a picture with my Instamatic if you'd like. <gasps> can I really, Will? And you can borrow my Swiss Army knife for a bit. <gasps> can I really? Yes, said William. He put his hand in his pocket and pulled out a rather squidgy looking bar of chocolate. And you can have half of this. Gosh, thanks, Will. William and Charlie's mother put her head round the door, wondering at the unaccustomed silence. I saw her son sitting side by side on Charlie's bed, chewing chocolate. William actually had his arms round Charlie's shoulders. Oh, I got more, said Charlie with his mouth full. Did you give him some of yours, Will? Naturally, said William loftily. We're friends and brothers. Another day went by and Charlie was definitely better. His face was much less swollen, his spirits high and his voice shriller yet. He had made up a song about his exploits which he sang endlessly and very loudly. Who came rushing down the hill? Charlie boy! Who had such an awful spill? Charlie boy! Who came down with a terrible thud covered in mud and covered in blood? Charlie, 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 Charlie boy! William, as he occasionally did, had an attack of earache, painful enough without Charlie's singing. Charles, he said, as the friend and brother was just about to come rushing down the hill for the 20th time. Do you think you could keep a bit quiet? Why? shouted Charlie at the top of his voice. Oh, oh, because I've got a earache. Oh, oh, said Charlie in a whisper. Oh, sorry, sorry, Will. Does it hurt a lot? Yes, said William, white-faced. It does. For the rest of the day, Charlie tiptoed about the house, occasionally asking William if he needed anything, and if he did, fetching it. He guarded his brother's peace, peace and quiet fiercely, frowning angrily at his mother when she dropped a saucepan on the kitchen floor. Hello, Charlie boy, shouted his father on his return from work. How's the poor old face? Shh, don't make such a noise, Dad, hissed Charlie furiously. Will's got earache. It was now a week since Charlie's accident. A week of harmony and brotherly love. Charlie's face was now miles better and William's earache quite gone. They were drawing pictures at the kitchen table with felt pens. Charles, said William, can I borrow your red? Mine's run out. No, said Charlie. Why not? You're not using it. Yes, I am, said Charlie, picking up his red felt and colouring with it. You did that just to be annoying, said William angrily. The word annoying rang a bell with Charlie and he grinned and nodded and said, Absolutely! Charlie, said William between his teeth, don't start that again or I'll hit you. You can't, said Charlie. I've got a bad face. I'll hit you all the same, said William. I'll shout in your bad ear, said Charlie. Oh, do you know what I'll shout? What? Absolutely! yelled Charlie and scuttled off out of the room with William in hot pursuit as life returned to normal. <laughs>